Welcome everyone. I'm Dr. Sam Spinelli, physical therapist and strength conditioning coach with Cisna Athletics. Today we're going to be talking about how to make your own scientific and evidence-based pre-workout. Time for a workout, baby! Let's go! Woo! Now you might say, why would I want to make my own pre-workout? There's lots on the market. Well, there's two main reasons why you might want to consider making your own pre-workout. Number one, it's actually cheaper. And that is a fantastic reason, in my opinion. Second one is it gives you a lot more control on what's actually in your pre-workout, which is a lot more important than some might think. A lot of the pre-workouts that are on the market currently are often underdosed on the things that actually enhance performance, overdosed with stimulants, and they put a lot of fillers in them that don't necessarily support what a lot of people want in their product. So just by simply going toward an option of where you're gonna be controlling what's in it, is gonna give you a lot more regulation on the quality of the product that you take. In this video, I'm gonna show you where I get my ingredients from, what ingredients I choose to put in the mixture, how much, and why. So, let's get into it. Now, in choosing to make your own pre-workout, one of the most important things is where you're gonna buy ingredients from. Now, you can definitely go down to a GNC, a Popeyes, any of these other supplement stores, and go and buy ingredients, but you're often gonna have a hard time in finding the isolated ingredients, you're gonna struggle in being able to get a good price, and you're gonna be bothered by the salesperson who's probably gonna to try to upsell you on a bunch of other items that don't have much effect. And for those reasons, that's why I personally just go and buy from Bulk Supplements. Bulk Supplements is a company that puts out fantastic ingredients, isolated compounds that you can just buy directly. So if you want creatine, if you want protein, whatever it is in a direct item, you can just purchase that exclusively. And they're super inexpensive, they're high quality, you can't ask for much more than that. So I'll put direct links down in the description box below for each of the individual items that we're gonna recommend. And I'll also put a discount code down below if you want 5% off. So let's check out our first item, creatine. Yo. Yo, what up, man? I hear you uh, got the good stuff. I do. What are you looking for? I'm looking for some creatine, you got any? Yeah, I got micronized creatine, baby. Yeah, can I get a bag of that? Yes, you can, sir. Glad you're doing business with you. Thank you. Creatine is one of the most researched and most supported supplements on the market. If you've never heard of creatine or don't know much about it, here's a quick little breakdown. Our muscles naturally store creatine in them. When our muscles contract, creatine helps to transfer this thing called phosphate, which is used to help create muscle contractions. So whenever you do high intensity activity, you're using creatine to help replenish energy for your muscles to work. If you don't have enough stored creatine, you can't maximize the amount of work that you can do. That's where creatine supplementation comes in because it helps to increase the amount of creatine storage that you have. So basically, if you're trying to lift more, jump further, sprint faster, do more reps, just about anything, creatine is a good option. And in the long term, creatine can help with muscle mass development and a lot more. So basically, everyone would benefit from creatine usage. Now, we're gonna have a full in-depth video on creatine in the future. And in that, we'll discuss the best types of creatine, how to best take it, etc. For this video, we're just gonna say that taking three to five grams of creatine monohydrate as part of your pre-workout can be a great option. And if you're doing that, on days that you don't train, you still do wanna try and take creatine as it's something that needs to be stored up in your body. Number two, beta alanine. Fun name to say, really great supplement. What more can you ask for? Well, beta alanine is basically an amino acid that our body is able to absorb in, transfer into our bloodstream, and then pass into our muscles. Once it's absorbed, it helps to transfer into our muscles and combine into a compound that buffers hydrogen. This is really beneficial for when we're working at higher levels of intensity, usually for a moderate duration of time, something such as doing a one to four minute activity, or whenever we're working in that rep range of eight to 15 reps. Now, in contrast to creatine, where it's gonna help you in the moment with greater power output or strength, beta alanine isn't gonna do that. However, it is still really beneficial because what it's gonna do is let you get more reps. We've actually seen in studies that beta alanine can help you get 12 to 13% more work done in a set. So across the long term, that's gonna be really beneficial to increase your strength and muscle mass development. Similar to creatine, the dosage is extremely similar, usually about three to five grams for most people, and it doesn't have to be taken pre-workout. Taking a pre-workout is a great option, just out of simplicity, and that way you get it in and you ensure that it's done. But if you find that you don't wanna take it then, you just need to take it at some point throughout the day on a consistent, regular basis. 
Now, some people will notice that when you take beta alanine, there's that associated tingling sensation. And that's something that's really more associated because of the nerve sensation to our skin when we take it. And that's something that we see usually happens when someone takes more than about one to two grams. So because you don't have to take it in one bolus before you train, you could very well break up your dosage per day into multiple little bouts. That way you don't have that sensation if it bothers you. All right, number three, caffeine. We all know caffeine. It's become such a huge mainstay of our modern life. Whether you're a coffee drinker or you're an energy drink lover, pretty much everybody nowadays has caffeine to some way. Pre-workouts are no different. Caffeine is a staple in them. In fact, when we look at the research on caffeine for pre-workout, it's one of the best options that we have supporting increased performance on aerobic tests, strength tests, power tests, basically everything. Just like with the prior two ingredients, the dosage matters. In general, for most of the research that we see on caffeine, it appears that generally about three to six milligrams per kilogram of body weight is what you need in order to have a true performance enhancing benefit. So for someone that weighs about 70 kilograms or about 155 pounds, they're gonna be looking at about 210 milligrams as their bottom line. In contrast, for someone that's a bit larger, someone like myself who's around 100 kilos or about 220 pounds, they're gonna be looking at taking about 300 milligrams as the bottom end of the dosage. For some people, this might seem like an alarming amount of caffeine. And there's definitely not a bad thing to go with less. You might be uncomfortable taking that amount at first, and that's where taking less can still be beneficial. It can increase your alertness, improve your mental cognition, and a lot of other benefits. We just don't necessarily see the same amount of performance enhancing benefits for strength and aerobic performance until you get at least that past that three milligrams per kilogram dosage. For those wondering if the type of caffeine matters, whether it's about taking a caffeine pill, drinking it from coffee, or some other option, it doesn't seem to distinctly matter. We know that about one cup of coffee has around 100 milligrams of caffeine, but the challenge with coffee is that it can vary considerably. One cup might have 100 milligrams, it might also only have 60 milligrams. And so when it comes to coffee, you have less consistent regulation on the doses you're taking. In contrast, if you were to take it by pill, a powder, a liquid, anything like that, then you have much more regulation on how much you're intaking. Now, the prior two ingredients that we looked at, they didn't require to be taken specifically pre-workout. In contrast, if you take a big dosage of caffeine early in the day, far away from training, it might help you crush your day, but then you won't have energy when it comes time to train. So a key aspect of caffeine usage is timing. We want to generally try to implement it around 30 to 60 minutes before a training session. And that's because we start to feel the effects of caffeine kicking in about after 15 minutes of taking it, but then we start to see the real peak of it around 60 minutes afterwards. So for most people, implementing a caffeine usage about 30 to 60 minutes before their training session is gonna allow them to really get in the maximum stimulation while they're training. Because the caffeine dosage is usually gonna last around two to six hours for most people. That's why generally I'll start drinking a little bit more coffee around the 30 to 60 minute mark before my session. And then if I'm gonna have a singular bolus of caffeine, so for instance, putting a little bit in my pre-workout shake, I'll have that right around the 30 minute mark with the rest of my ingredients. That way it really kicks in and maximizes once I finish up my warm up, I'm starting to get into my heavy lifts. All right, now we're gonna get to number four, and that's gonna be citrulline malate. If you're looking for a way to ramp up your pump, then this one is definitely for you. Citrulline is amino acid that our body can readily absorb. When it gets absorbed into our body, it helps to ramp up our arginine levels, which then transfers over and starts to increase the amount of nitric oxide in our body. This basically encourages better blood flow, which is our pump. In addition to enhancing the pump, citrulline can also help to buffer the fatigue that you experience while training, particularly when doing high intensity activities like anaerobic exercise. So it lets you work harder for longer, which is really beneficial. Now, when it comes to actually buying citrulline, an important consideration is the actual type of citrulline that you buy. Now, if you go to buy citrulline, you're gonna be usually be offered two main types, either L-citrulline or citrulline malate. So essentially what they do is they take citrulline and they combine it with another ingredient called malate. This seems to help with the absorption and the utilization of it. You usually see it broken down in other two options, either as a one-to-one -one ratio or as a two-to-one ratio. The two-to-one seems to be a little bit better, but it doesn't necessarily seem to make a huge difference. Now, when we're looking at the exact dosage of citrulline malate, 
Most of the research is indicating that about six to eight grams is gonna be beneficial for most people. And again, we're generally seeing a recommendation for about 30 to 60 minutes before your session, so it works out really well for the timing along with caffeine. It'll have a peak effect around that one to two hour mark, similar to caffeine. So by the time you get through your warm up, get into your heavy lifts, you'll be starting to feel it. And then once you get into your accessory work, you'll really notice that effect helping out with that pump. It's also worth considering taking citrulline malate on non-training days, as we've now seen some of the literature indicate that it has a bit of that absorption effect where you need to have a bit of a baseline to really maximize its usage, similar to these two. And it also has a host of different cardiovascular uh, benefits so it helps with a lot of heart health issues and all sorts of different things that make it a great option to take on non-training days. The literature indicates you probably don't need to take quite as much on non-training days, so usually more in that two to six gram range. All right, let's talk about number five, and this is betaine. This one is lesser known to the masses, but it's emerging as one that holds a lot of different benefits. For anyone who's been around the supplement industry for a long time, they probably saw the craze of around beetroot juice a few years ago. This is where we had a lot of individuals thinking that beetroot juice was really powerful, really beneficial, and had tons of people chugging back the red juice. One of the key compounds in beetroot juice is actually betaine. So after they realized this, that's where we saw the isolated compound get broken down and sold as a singular product. This supplement's now been found to have benefits for decreasing fat mass, increasing lean mass, improving aerobic performance, and some strength benefits. Its effects are a little bit more variable because it's gonna be dependent upon how much betaine you do actually intake in your diet. There's a lot of different foods, for instance, like spinach and beetroots that have betaine in them. So if you have a diet that's low in betaine and you go to supplement with it, you actually see a pretty significant boost from it. In contrast, if you're someone who already eats a lot of these different items, you might not notice as much benefit from betaine. So generally the dosage recommendation is about 2.5 grams per day. But if you're someone who is either lower on betaine scale in your nutrition, you might find that taking more is beneficial. And for people who already eat a lot of betaine rich foods, you might notice that you don't benefit from as much and you can take a little bit lower dosage. All right, our sixth and final ingredient is salt. Now you might be wondering, salt? It's not really a supplement. And that's right, but it's still something that we can take advantage of and we get benefit from, from implementing, particularly right before we train. Salt is made up of two electrolytes, sodium and chloride. Sodium is a really important one for training because it helps in facilitating muscle contractions and in transporting amino acids into our muscles. So adding a little bit of salt into your pre-workout not only helps to ensure that you have a sufficient amount of electrolytes in your bloodstream, but it also can facilitate more absorption of these other ingredients that are amino acid based. Now, if you dig into salt further, you will find that there's all sorts of different recommendations about the type of salt. But in reality, we don't really see a distinct difference between the different kinds. So generally, just taking table salt and you're good to go. Now, the dosage on this one is super small. I'm talking super, super small. Only 50 milligrams. When we consider that about a teaspoon of salt has about 2,300 milligrams, we're talking a very minor dosage. So you're like legitimately just putting a dash of salt in there. All right, so let's summarize. We've got a few different ingredients here that if you wanna maximize your pre-workout, this is what you're gonna be looking at based off science right now. So we got creatine, about three to five grams. We've got beta alanine, about three to five grams. We got caffeine, generally about 200 to 600 milligrams, depending upon your size. Then we got citrulline malate, which is gonna be about that six to, eight mil six to eight grams for most people. Then we got betaine, which is gonna be about 2.5 grams, and salt, just that 50 milligrams, that tiny, tiny dosage. And again, I get all of my supplements from bulk supplements